Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome back to Soteria Prophetic Ministries. I'm your host and teacher for the next few moments. My name is Elisa Rogers Fields, and I am coming to you out of uh, Joshua chapter 5, I believe it's verse 13. And it's where Joshua was confronted by a stranger. And Joshua asked the stranger a question. He said, are you for us or are you against us? Now, the scripture says that the man appeared before him with a a drawn sword. So it wasn't an unusual question for Joshua to ask him, but you've got to understand the season that Joshua was coming out of and the season that Joshua was in. And so Joshua, he's coming out of, because this is relatively the first um, five chapters, so we don't understand what that looks like chronologically. At least I don't have that knowledge right now. But, you know, it's still soon after Moses' death, and it's still uh, early in terms of him leading Israel into this new province, this new um, uh, adventure, new assignment. And so, you know, Joshua was still trying to determine, okay, what am I doing? Who's for me? Who's against me? And so that's not an unusual question. When you're in a season where, especially something that Joshua came out of, he came out of a season of, of a lot of conflict, a lot of controversy, um, a lot of pain, anguish, loss, you name it. And so not only did Israel lose the entire old, older generation, which we don't know the extent of what that bore down on Joshua, whose family members of his were left behind and how that looked like, who was left responsible for him to take care of. So, I mean, you know, we don't really know all of what, how that affected him. But then outside of all of that, to lose Moses, who had become as a spiritual father to him, a mentor, and, you know, someone who trained him and, and prepared him and imparted great, a great skill set. So having to lose Moses and then finding out, as you read in Joshua 1, how Joshua was so immobilized by the pain and by the grief that the Lord had to literally approach him and say, Moses is dead, you know, and it's not as if Joshua didn't know, but sometimes, and I mean, this is for all of us, particularly for me, sometimes God has to confront you on things that that you haven't quite, you know, rational rationalize in your mind yet like I know it's I know it's that it has happened. I know it is happening. I know things will never be the same again. I know things will you know it's just such an awkward season and and unsettling when at the same time. And you just don't know how to react. You don't know what you're moving forward into. You certainly don't want to go back. And so you do, you just sort of become immobilized. Like you just stand still and you become reluctant and, and, and you know, um, you know, just hesitant to move forward. And so God had to confront Joshua and said, you know, I understand, but there is work for you to do. And I'm saying that to somebody today that, you know, I don't know what situation that you faced to where you're, it has just crippled you and immobilized you to where you just don't know what to do and you find yourself knowing that you need to move forward, realizing you can't go back, but just not having the ability to step forward, to just make a move, and then not knowing which move to make. So there's a lot of things, and so it's not that we can, can uh, you know, attack Joshua or diminish the call upon his life because he was found in that state. That's a real human place for grief, loss, um, you know, any type of challenge. That's a real place to where you just, I'm just present. I don't know what my tomorrow looks like. I can't go back to another yesterday, and I'm just trying to get through today. And so that's a very real place. But anyway, God gives him the word, and he moves on. And But we find that right after the battle of Jericho that this man shows up, and which we know it was the angel of the Lord. But at that time, Joshua was unable to see that. And so I kind of want to talk to you a little bit about how our lenses can change the perspective of what God is doing in us. Like, you know, which lens are we looking through? And, you know, what are we seeing? And, and how, wh- how, how does that, I'm trying to put this all together, how does that alter our perception? So this angel says to, of course, you know, we find out later on it's the angel, but he says to Joshua, Joshua said, are you for us or against us? And the angel said, neither. <laughs> and when I first read it, I was like, hmm, at least tell the man you're for him, right, so he can kind of let down his guard. Because he's in a season of warfare, and it's important when somebody shows up with a drawn sword, 
I need to know whose side you're on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I would have asked the same question. And so the angel was like, neither. You know, I'm neither for you or against you. I'm, <laughs> it was like, the Lord sent me. And so I, I chuckled, and I'm still chuckling because I, I just find it so uh, amusing because if anybody needed to hear that, that I'm for you, this man is in a season of warfare, you guys. He's in a season of battle and conflict. And a man shows up with a drawn sword, and out of nowhere, somebody he doesn't know, yeah, Joshua asks who you are, and, you know, what are you doing here? And then the man says, no, I'm not for you or against you. You know, so you're like, huh? <laughs> so what's going on here? And so, you know, finally the Lord has sent this angel, um, and some commentators say it was a theophany, you know, you can go and, and research and, and, and dig into that a little later, but at any rate, the Lord sent him. And he was giving Joshua instructions, but uh, my point is, well, I've got two points. Number one, I love the fact that the angel said, I'm either for you or against you. And so, yeah, at that point, Joshua needed to hear that angel said, I'm on your side, right? But that was not the message of the angel. And I'm telling you, that, y'all, this thing blessed my whole, well, y- you know I love the word. Y'all know this. But it blessed my life because many times, you know, Many times we think, let me figure out, many, figure out what I want to say this. many times we think we know what we need to hear. Like, you know, we've already determined in our mind, like, this is what I need to hear in this season. But that's not necessarily what God needs you to hear in that season. Does that make sense? What you think you need to hear and what God knows you need to hear are two different things. So if he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, right? Neither my ways your ways. So Joshua may have needed to hear this man say, I'm on your side. But God was like, no, that's not what I'm saying. Because you'll notice later on in battle that Joshua had sin in the camp, and Joshua lost the battle. So had the angel have said, I'm on your side, then, you know, this would have brought tremendous confusion in terms of this battle that Joshua was going to end up losing. And so God in his infinite wisdom and foresight does not release or authorize the angel to say, I'm on your side. And I think that's important, y'all. I'm telling you. That's so important in terms of relationships, in terms of, you know, those that God is sending to our life. They're not necessarily on your side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're not necessarily for you or even against you, but they're sent by the Lord. So if anything, I'm not on your side. I'm not against your side, but I'm on the Lord's side, right? And, and so just know that that will always work out for you. Yeah, I'm not on your side because if I'm on your side, then there may, there may come a time where I may have to compromise my assignment to to prove my loyalty to you. I, I, you know what I'm saying? If you can tell me where I'm going with this, if I tell you that I'm on your side, then that means even if you make a mistake, you know, even if you fall, I mean, short, short of the glory of God, I still have to stand beside you. And when you think about what happened with Samuel and with Saul, Samuel was neither for Saul or against Saul. Saul Samuel was on assignment. And so I think, again, when I talk about those lenses that we look through and, and the way that we perceive things, sometimes we perceive things, you know, by virtue of our experience. And it, that takes me back to Joshua's question, are you for me or are you against me? And he was like, neither. So it was a good question, but it was the wrong question. He should have asked, why are you here? Right? That, that should have been the, because that question would have answered the purpose of that man, hence the angel. So not, are you for me or against me, even though that question was birthed out of Joshua's season of conflict. He needed to know, evidently, he needed to know, are you on my side? Are you, have you come to help me? That's what he needed to, needed to know. And I'm not knocking Joshua because many of us, I know I have, found myself needing someone to be on my side. But is that, is that necessarily what God wants? Does God necessarily want people sent to be on our side? Or does God want people sent who will be on his side, who will lead us or who will guide us or who will support us as God leads them? Not so much what I want and what my expectations are, but by virtue of what God is saying. And so in that case, God sent you. There may be seasons when you may not be on my side because you're on God's side. And there may be seasons when you're on my side because I'm on God's side. Does that make sense? So, you know, Joshua asked that question, you know, why? Are you for me or against me? And this angel said, neither. I think that's so important because when, you, when you're coming, uh, as I said, out of those seasons of, of conflict and challenge and you don't know what, I mean, you've got so much going on, right? 
I mean, you're trying to heal and you're trying to fight at the same time. Come on, somebody. You're trying to heal, you're trying to grieve, and you're trying to conquer territory, and you're training an army, and you're allocating land and resources. That is a lot for anybody. So we don't knock the question that Joshua asked. It was a valid question, but it was the wrong question. The question should have been, why are you here? To what purpose have you arrived? And then the response to that lets me know, okay, God sent you. So as long as I remain upright, as long as I walk before the Lord, I know that you, you'll be for me. But the minute I walk contrary, I know this, this relationship is not going to work. And so in terms of um, looking at some of our relationships, looking at some of the people that God has sent into our life, I think the question that we should ask ourselves is, Lord, why is that person in my life? Not are you for me or are you against me? Because then it it, 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 le- it lends to a personal, um, you know, a more selfish response. I need you. For, in other words, if I say I'm not for you, then are you going to receive what I have to say? Are you going to receive my support? Are you going to, you know, receive my assignment if I say I'm not for you? If I say I am for you, then does that mean that, you know, you can uh, become disloyal or have some other character issue? And I have to remain by your side regardless of what God is telling me to do. So that's a selfish question. Are you for me or against me? Because the bottom line is I'm, we're on the Lord's side, and it's not about you. It's not about me. It is about the work of the Lord. And the work that God called Joshua to was a kingdom work. And this is why God said, Moses is dead. I need you to come. I need you to wake up. I need you to rise up. I need you to stand up. I need you to gird up your loins because your, your life as you've always known it, as you have always known it, is about to change forever. You'll never go back to that season again. You'll never go back to the other side of Jordan. You'll never go back to the wilderness, and you'll never walk beside Moses again. And so many of us are grieving the good old days. I know I do. I'm just going to tell the truth. It's shame the devil. Sometimes I, I think back. I think back, honestly, you guys. I think back. Uh, this is my going into my 17th year pastoring. And, you know, it's man, listen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I thank God for it. Don't, don't get me wrong. But, you know, it's. There's a lot. The Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. And there's a lot. And there's so many there's just so many things that you you have to stand through and, and confront and it, it it's it's a work. If if you if you're doing it let's say if you're doing it the way God say do it, let me put it like that. I mean any we can there's an easy road for anything, right? But I've chosen, you know, with the help of the Lord to do it God's way. And it's not easy. I I'm not complaining, but I'm stating a fact. This walk, this work this assignment is not an easy assignment. And so, you know, to, to, to look at where Joshua is, he will never sit at the bottom of the mountain waiting for Moses to come down with the word. That season had ended. From this point forward in his life, he's the one going to the mountain spiritually. He is the one receiving the word of God. He, so he has to, to shoulder the weight of the responsibility of that which was on his predecessor's um, uh, shoulder, right? And, and so this is a, it's a heavy work. And so, you know, many times we respond by virtue of our own human experience and by virtue of what we need, what our emotions are longing for. But at the end of the day, it's not about what we feel we need and who's on our side and who's going to support me and who likes me and who doesn't. At the end of the day, Father, am I pleasing your heart? And if that's the, listen, if if you're pleasing the heart of God, you don't ever have to ask anybody, are you for me or are you against me? Amen. Why? Because if you walk up right before the Lord, he said, I will withhold no good thing from you. And God will pronounce not only his favor, but favor with man. And so you, that's a prayer that I prayed last night. I was asking God, I said, Lord, thank you for your favor, not give me favor with man. And I'm asking God for favor in certain different endeavors of my life. It's not enough just to have favor with God. I praise God for open heavens and things. But you live here on earth. you got to deal with earth people, human beings, dirt bodies. And so, you know, this was a place where Joshua found himself wondering, are you here to help me or, you know, are you my enemy? How, how, should, I, how should I proceed? And then angel said, none of the above. I'm not for you or against you. This is not even about you. This is about the work of our Father. This is the work. This is about a kingdom everlasting work. You know, your feelings. Really? I mean, 
like, you know what I'm saying? Your feelings, am I your friend? This is not about friendship. This is, I was telling one of my spiritual daughters, this is not about friendship and buddy, buddy, and partner. If, if so, you're going you're gonna to do this thing wrong because you're going to always be led by your feelings and your emotions about what somebody else thinks. And, and so if your friend, your buddy falls out with you, then, you know, what do you do? How do you proceed? Do you stop and wait for them to get it together and, and relinquish what God has called you to do or delay your assignment? Or do you part friends and say, I love you, and when you get it together, call me and keep it moving? So I wanted to leave those few words with you, uh, people of God. Coming out of Joshua chapter 5, verse uh, 13, where he had that encounter with the man. We know now that the man was an angel sent by the Lord, and he was a commander of the Lord's army. And so this man, commander to commander, right, because rank represents rank, uh, um, identifies rank. And, and so this man said, hey, you know, I'm... I'm you're asking the wrong question. I'm here to do the work, work of the Lord. And as long as you're working with him, we're going to be okay. And I think we need to look at that even in our relationships, too. As long as you, like the Bible said, who can walk? Uh, how can two walk together except they agree? So it comes to a point in time to where, you know, as long as, as, as you're on the right track, we'll be fine. But just know, like Saul, uh, Samuel and Saul, if, if things go to the left, I'm not going to the left with you. Right? Follow me as I follow Christ. If I start veering to the left, you better keep going. So our relationships in the kingdom of God cannot be uh, contingent upon, are you my friend? Do you like me? Are you for me? We've got to mature in our minds, and we've got to mature in the way that we, um, in the way that we identify our relationships that it goes so much further than, are you my friend? Are you with me? Or, or are you against me? The bottom line is, are we on the Lord's side? And if we all are on the Lord's side, all hearts, all minds are in common, we have one thing in common, we're on, on one accord, and then we'll get the work done. And there won't be any ism or schisms or, you know, questions about, are you my friend? There won't be an issue at that. But we've got to get to a place where we have to say, you know what, God? This is what you've called me to do. I don't have any friends. My father used to say, I don't have any friends in the gospel. When God calls me to do a work, he calls me to do a work. And if, you know, it is what it is. That's what my ultimate loyalty, my ultimate loyalty is to the things of God, to the work of God, to the assignment of God that's on my life. And if that appeals to people, wonderful. If it rubs them the wrong way, which it often does, <laughs> wonderful. At the end of the day, we are not here to please ourselves or please our fellow man. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, the fear of a man brings a snare. So if you're concerned about who's for me and who likes me and who's amen in me, it, don't, that your perspective, the lenses that you're looking through, you want to restrict your mobility in ministry. And you want to shorten your ministry life. Not your life life, but you want to shorten your ministry life if, you're looking for validation from man, okay? So wherever you are, whatever your place of service is in the kingdom, please keep that center and focus that we're here to glorify God. Him only shall we serve. Yes, we'll have uh, coworkers and, 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 you know, people that we work with in the faith. Yes, we will. But that's not what it's all about. It's not about finding a buddy or a pal. It's about doing the work of God, and as long as we don't want to court, the glory of God, God will get his glory, the work will get done, and, and the kingdom of heaven will be advanced and edified. But if we're here to figure out, are you my friend, you're on my side, or you, you're operating in the works of the flesh, and we know that uh, God takes no pleasure in this flesh. Amen. So I pray that this word has encouraged your heart. I pray that as some of you are um, just taking inventory of some of your friendships or relationships or partnerships or whatever you want to call it, that you don't base, especially relationships that you're building with a kingdom mindset, uh, you know, but you don't base, a kingdom influence rather, that you don't base these relationships on likability, how well you like each other, but you base it upon what is the will of God? Why have God, why have God connected you to my life? Why are we connected? And then making sure, let me just say this, 
making sure that there's a mutual transaction there, not you pulling, pulling, pulling. I dealt with that a couple of podcasts ago. But not you pulling and, 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 and they're left dry, but that you all work together. If they have a spiritual thing that you can benefit from, then you need to have a spiritual thing. It's some, you know, it needs to work out. It needs to work out that both parties are walking away feeling satisfied, feeling fulfilled. Otherwise, that's a unba- there's an unbalance there. And eventually you're going to have a breakup in that friendship, that relationship, because one person is doing all the heavy lifting and the other person is just there for the, <laughs> for the gravy. Okay? So you guys be blessed. Stay safe. Grace and peace to you. Until next time, God bless you.